Very good evening to you all. Hello and welcome once again to Virtual Church here on Beauty and Sound, brought to you by me, Richard McVeigh. Our producer tonight, Josh Wilson, so say hello to him in the chat. He'll keep an eye out for things. Caroline will be around soon. No doubt the cats will be in causing mayhem. And more importantly, you're all here as well, the BIS community. It's great to be with you once again. And it's great to start with a really wonderful, uplifting, rousing hymn. Uh, the hymn that we did, um, we used for a virtual choir all those years ago. Praise to the Lord, the King of creation. O oh, my soul, praise him, for he is thy health and salvation. It was a request from Alex S. <clears throat> Alex S, if you're in, let us know, and we'll say hello to you. Bill Ratey has correctly identified the organ by the bells, not by the pipes. <laughs> <laughs> and Murray says, can we call Richard nicknames such as Tinkerbell? I would rather have a different name than Tinkerbell, perhaps, Murray. I'm sure you can do better than that. Right, so today uh, we celebrated the presentation of Christ in the temple. And I thought we could have a few hymns relevant for today. So how about the next one? wonderful tune called Picardy to the words let all mortal flesh keep silence and with fear and trembling stand ponder nothing earthly minded for with blessing in his hand Christ our God to earth descender awful homage homage to demand Okay, so bell ringers, do you mind? We're going to um, crack on with virtual church now. I'm sure you'll come out later, but for now, guys in the bell tower, would you mind stopping, putting those mufflers on or whatever it is that you do, and let's enjoy Picardy. Here we go.
Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence to the Tune Picardy. A French melody, 17th century. Interestingly, did you know that this uh, hymn tune, according to this hymn book at least, was arranged by none other than Rafe Dan Williams. Anyone know who Rafe Dan Williams is? I don't know quite know where where that's come from. Anyone see that? Rafe, you see that on the screen? Rafe Dan Williams. Hmm. Am I missing something there? Maybe I've been misattributing it to the great Rafe Vaughan Williams all these years. But no, maybe it's Rafe Dan Williams. Christ Triumphant, Ever Reigning is up next. A wonderful tune called Gwitting Power. And it's been requested by an equally, more so actually, wonderful Patreon, Ben Wallace. Ben Wallace has been around for a long time. Um, easily, easily a long-term listener. And Ben has um, simply said, I never tire of this majestic hymn. So as I say, it's called Gwitting Power, there are five verses uh, and the refrain, Yours the glory and the crown, high renown, the eternal name. Yes, Doodle Launch, a 
absolutely correct. Where else could we be? Where else could we be with a sound like this? This is not Romsey. Romsey couldn't do this at all. Um, ben, thank you for sending that through. Great hymn. It's always good to play that. As you say, I never, well, you say, you never tire of this majestic hymn. I never tire of playing it because it is a really wonderful hymn. Thank you very much to, to Jim, to Jerry, to Paul, to Eleanor and to Thomas as well, who have already donated to the cause. The cause is, of course, Beauty in Sound, keeping it going, um, and more specifically, of course, our music room. Um, speaking of which, we are getting very close to it happening. We have, we've had builders round now to come and talk to us in a bit more detail, and I would like to hand over to you. Can you think of any good um, fundraising opportunities, ideas that we can do to actually raise just a few pounds um, which might help uh, fund the music room, the floor, the internal lighting, new cameras, these sorts of things need to be paid for. Just for your information there is a little bit of work going on in the kitchen and dining room here but the music room is a separate entity uh, financially so everything that we raise here on BIS will go specifically into the bricks for the music room and it's going to be a wonderful cause a wonderful idea um, and a wonderful a wonderful product I think and one idea that I've had um, which could benefit you all personally you all if you want to um, I will tell you in a minute actually I'm going to play another hymn and I will come back with an idea which you may or may not take up Anyway, so the next hymn that we're going to go into is from Derek Warren. He says about it, This hymn has always been the closing hymn on Easter Sunday at Trinity Lutheran Church in Freeport, uh, uh, PA. And it's not Pennsylvania, no. Where would, where would PA be? Someone will know. I'm afraid I'm not American, Derek, so I don't know your um, states by initial. Uh, for many years, so he says it's, it's, it's been the closing hymn on Easter Sunday at this Trinity Lutheran Church in Freeport for many years. I wish more people knew it, he says. Well, well, Derek, let's just play. Um, let's see what we can do about this. I'm sure we can get a few more people today who th to know it. I, mean, I think we, we have had it before. It is, PA is Pennsylvania. I was right. Um, and Murray says Paris. It could be Paris, couldn't it? To be honest, <laughs> um, it could be Port. Um, uh, no, what could what what city or county in this country begins with PA? Pem Ports? No. Uh, can't think of one now. Oh, I can't think of one. Anyone name a town or city or place in England that begins with PA? Hello, there we go, I'll hand over to you. First one wins. <laughs> okay, so it is Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Risen our victorious head. Sing his praises. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the dead. And it is a request from Derek Warren, who is also a Patreon. So thank you very much, Derek. Padstow. Stephen, Padstow. I know Padstow. We've cycled in Padstow, of course. How could I forget Padstow? Uh, Paddington, yes, oh, Nick Knight wrote Paynton, Paynton, don't know what that is, uh, but Daniel, actually, you're pretty good there, considering you're not American, uh, you're not, you are American, not English, Paddington, Paddington Station, Paddington Bear, here we go, Christ has risen, hallelujah.
a great hymn, as, as Doug Alderdice has just said, it's a great, um, it is a great hymn, and uh, Derek says that he wished that more people knew it. Well, I'm surprised more people don't know it, actually, because it's a great tune. The tune is called Morgan Lead, one word, Morgan Lead, and it's Christ is Risen, Hallelujah. So, Derek says, I wish more people knew it. I say, I, I'm surprised more people don't know it, so hopefully that's just got one or two people now knowing it who didn't know it before. Hands up anyone who didn't know it before I played it, but now knows it. So, quick thank you to DCT Online, to John Denning for your donations as I was playing uh, that one, I think. So thank you very much. John says, best wishes for the renovations. <sighs> It's, it's, it, it's good to be happening from around April time, but it just seems like so far removed. <laughs> uh, but it's going to be, it's going to be amazing, a really, really amazing. So I did say that um, I did have an idea and it's, I've been wanting to do it for a long time actually. And I always, as an organist, as a professional organist, working in uh, various places up and down the country, have been an organ teacher. Um, and when I was uh, at some cathedrals, I used to have maybe half a dozen students throughout the course of a month. Some would come weekly, some would come monthly, some would come actually very irregularly, maybe once or twice a year. Um, and I've, since COVID and since uh, stepping away from full-time cathedral music, my, I haven't really kept up my um, status as an organ teacher. But I think perhaps I really ought to do that. So, I'm going to be offering um, online organ lessons. If anybody would be interested in occasional online organ lessons over Zoom or FaceTime or whatever media we want to use, I'd be very um, interested and open to anybody who would like to have advice, um, consultation, you know, just to bounce some ideas around. Um, I'd be very happy. To, 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 um, to hear from people who would like to hook up and um, you know learn one or two things. Maybe I'm, I, I might learn one or two things from you. So bear that in mind. And if you do, or if you are interested, just send me a, an email, richard at beautyinsound.co.uk um, and I might set something up over the coming uh, weeks. So exciting, might meet some new people, actually put a, a face to a screen name. Okay, let's now go into another hymn. This is a, a bit of a quieter one. This is a, a relevant hymn for the presentation of Christ in the temple. It's faithful vigil ended, watching, waiting, seize. Master grant my servant has di his discharge in peace. All my spirit promised, all the Father willed. Now these eyes behold it perfectly fulfilled. Verse 4, Christ, the people's glory, watching, doubting, sees. Grant to us thy servants our discharge in peace. Words by Timothy Dudley Smith. And quiz question for you guys. On what well-known text is this based? What is it, um, what is it paraphrasing? So it's faithful vigil ended to the tune... Uh, pastor, pastorum.
really beautiful tune that, isn't it? It's uh, Pastor Pastorum by um, F. Um, Silcher, S-I-L-C-H-E-R. Someone said, K-R said, in Germany, this tune is called Alle ha, um, uh, ha, is it Yaha? Um, Vida and it. I don't, I don't think it's and it. That must be an autocorrect. Um, there's a funny beeping sound coming from somewhere in this house. Never heard that beeping sound before in my life. What it is? It sounds like um, like a heart monitor in a hospital or something. I think we're we've got a we're hosting patients in A and E. I don't know what's going on. Uh, hope, let's hope it's not the stream about, about to collapse. Anyway, let's go into our next hymn. Beautiful hymn. As as uh, did anyone did anyone uh, answer the question? Uh, David Mackenzie Mills did say that it's based on the Nunc Dimittis. Of course, it's based on the Nunc Dimittis. Yes, the great, the beautiful, beautiful, uh, very familiar words. Okay, so now to where are we going next? We're going to get into a request from Benjamin. Benjamin who, you say? Well, you know Benjamin. You don't, I don't need to give you a surname for Benjamin. Benjamin is a very familiar face around here and a very familiar name. Benjamin Yao, of course. And he's requested a song. And he sent it in. Uh, actually, it's a, it's a hymn, but it, the words are, I have a song that Jesus gave me. It is. It was sent from heaven above. There never was a sweeter melody. Tis a melody of love. And there is a refrain which goes, in my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody with heaven's harmony. And then those words repeat. So the tune is called Heart Melody and the words and music are both by Elton Roth. Um, and what does Benjamin Yao says? He says, the overwhelming response to my requests recently encouraged me to continue making requests, I suppose. <laughs> well, Benjamin, your requests are always welcome. They're always welcome, my friend. So you, you keep sending them in. Um, so let's have a go with it, shall we? Let's, let's solo out the tune so we can have a, um, a bit of a clue as to how it might go, because I suspect this won't be a particularly well-known one. Although I say that all the time, and then you always prove me wrong. <laughs> Let's see. If you know this one, give me a thumbs up.
That may or may not be in the score, by the way, that bit at the end. Uh, so there you go, it's just sort of a very light-hearted, um, short, very short hymn, actually. Um, four, four lines, three lines, no, four, yeah, four, four lines and then a refrain. It's over very quickly, actually. So um, for the final verse, I, re I repeated the chorus. Why not? Um, so there we go. Benjamin Yao, thank you very much for introducing that one to us. I want to see if anyone... Uh, ah! Some people did say they knew it. So who knew it? Richard Allegra knew it. Uh, Eileen Kremlin. Uh, Van's Mouse knew it. Maurice didn't know it. I'm not surprised, Maurice. Um, uh, Lodwick. Apologies for that pronunciation. Didn't know it. Ruth knew it. Vince knew it as well. So quite a few of you who did, actually. I Well, I, I didn't know it. Uh, and that, that's me saying I didn't know it. I liked it but didn't know it. So there we go, another one for our repertoire and another one for the BIS hymnal. Thank you very much. I think this next one you might, this was sent in by a dear friend, um, our dear friend, Glenn. And he said, um, sang this a few years ago, back at a friend's request in honor of her birthday. So Glenn Snyder has sent this one in. Now we have had it before, where is it? Because I didn't. I I went to add it to the hymnal, and then realised it was already in the hymnal, so I didn't need to put it in. So we have had it before. It is um, my Jesus, I love thee to the tune Gordon. My Jesus, I love thee. Sort of a delightful little tune. This um, very straightforward. Sort of the opposite of what Benjamin's hymn was about. This one's a bit more reflective, I think. A bit slower and a bit calmer. So let's have a let's just bring um, out some of the more delicate colours on this wonderful organ. So let's bring out the 16, 8 and 4, 5 and 1 third, the Nazard played up the octave on the Grand Org, the great here. And then to accompany that, we'll have the flutes eight and four on both the choir and the swell. Now, I think that will sound really nice. So my Jesus, I love thee, I know thou art mine. For thee, all the um, follies of sin I resign. My gracious redeemer, my savior art thou. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, is now. This is what it sounds like, I think.
my Jesus, I love thee, I know thou art mine, for thee all the follies of sin I resign. Beautiful um, tune, as I, as I said before, it's called Gordon. Um, apologies about the wrong, the slip at the end there. Um, but it's a gorgeous tune, I think it's, uh, yeah, as someone actually did say that, they're going to have it at their funeral, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's that sort of reflective, meditative hymn, isn't it, rather than an uplifting um, romp. It's it's a beautiful sort of opportunity to reflect on you know the love that Jesus has for us. I think. So Glenn Snyder, thank you very much. Glenn is very much a long term listener, so it's great to have you with us, Glenn, uh, week in and week out. It's also great to have, of course, new people joining us week in and week out. So if you are new uh, today, or if you are new, if you are new. You know, recently joined, please do let, let us know and um, I will give you a shout out. It's always good to see new names in the chat. For example, Divgrad and Curl is an interesting name. I don't recognise your name. I don't always look up at the chat. So I don't know if it's probably people who've been chatting for ages that I've not seen. Donna, I don't recognise your name, but you are all very, very welcome indeed. Very welcome. A lot of people who've been around for a while um, are channel members like Ian Johnson and Glenn, he's waving, and uh, Eileen and Katrina. And the number next to their name uh, signifies basically how long they've been a channel member. And they, these people are supporting BIS on a monthly basis. So I really appreciate and love you all uh, for that. Daniel says, cool. There you go, been, been here for two and a half years. There you go. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I'll, it's good to have you with us. I, I think two and a half years, that's probably a median term, listener. <laughs> oh, wow, Martin and G. Fraser have um, their medals now. Oh, that's very, that's very long term, listener. <laughs> anyway, let's go on to the, the, our next one. This, I, put, I popped this one in today because this one was recommended to me as a as a hymn for um, the presentation of Christ in the temple. Actually, um, it's of the Father's heart begotten, not to the um, um, metrical version by Wilcox, but to the original plain chant, which is more beautiful, I think, more beautiful. Where is it? Let me just quickly, let me just stop talking for a moment. There it is. Um, the tune is called um, Divinum Mysterium. Of the Father's heart begotten, ere the world began to be. He is Alpha and Omega. He is He the source, the ending He. Thank you very much, Bill, for your, um, um, your, your five gifts and your five dollars just now. That's very kind. Thank you very much, Bill. But for or everything you do, you are a much loved member of our community. You all are. You all are. So this is plain song. You'll know the tune, obviously from the um, from Christmas. David Wilcox. It's one of the. It's a really good hymn. It's a good. It's a good processional hymn, I think, because it's quite. It's quite slow, and um, it has a it has presence about it, and there are quite a few verses to get through as well before you get into the final descant. Sing, sing his praises, <laughs> just like that, and at that pitch as well. I'm sure some sopranos do sing down there <laughs> when they've had a few whiskies <laughs> around Christmas. Anyway, let's have a go at this beautiful plain chant. Let's solo out the um, the melody on these eight foot fours. Of the, of the Father's heart begotten, or Father's love begotten, as it says here.
I think actually it's, it's, it works more successfully like that. I think the, 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 the Wilcox version that we all know now in 3-4 in compound time, we, we've gotten so used to it that hearing the original version now feels very strange. Um, because David Wilcox was in his 90s when he passed. Um, so he wasn't quite old enough to have written the original plane song, which dates apparently from the 13th century. So he wasn't, he wasn't 800 years old. Although it feels like it, because he was around forever. And he did so much in his lifetime, it was wonderful. Um, but uh, yeah, isn't that gorgeous? Ian Johnson says, I like that version. I, d I do too. I do too. I prefer it. And I think, rather happily, it's in the revised English hymnal as well, which is it's good news. So that's a big tick for that hymn book. So let's go into and now a request from Peter Bray, um, who who says, um, "Bobby, are you are you going to be all right? Hey, she's not very well at the minute. This little cat, she's got a, a little infection, haven't you?" Okay, so Peter has asked for fill thy, fill thou my life, O Lord, my God. Uh, fill, fill, fill thou my life, O Lord, my God, to the tune Lloyd. Um, and he says, I've played this hymn tune many times with the brass band. <laughs> Yet in all the hymnals I have, and all the years I have been playing the organ in church, I have never come across it. F uh, he finally found it, and he'd like to know from the community if um, if they know this hymn. There we go. So, anyone, Bobby, are you okay? Can you just, do you, are you going to go, are you going to sit there? Are you going to sit still, my dear? If you sit there, you'll be absolutely fine, all right? So, Peter Bray would like to know if you, if you know this tune. It's called Lloyd, I think. I think it's called Lloyd. We have had this um, hymn. Oh dear. How can I play? With a cat on my keys. I cannot play with a cat on my keys. Okay, Bobby, you can't do that, okay? If you're going to be here, then you have to stay there, all right, my dear? It's a serious request, okay? Knick-knack, don't encourage her. Don't encourage her. She would. She'd give him, she'd, she wouldn't, it wouldn't be a duet, because duet gives, you know, the idea of a duet is it's 50-50. But it wouldn't be 50-50, would it, Bobby? It would be you know, more like all to you. You, you take all the limelight. Come on, I need to play this hymn, Bobs. Right, you, if you stay there, honestly, you'll be fine. Stay there. Stay there. Right, let's, let's, not, let's ignore her, and she might get bored, and then just sit still. Anyway, so let's go into this hymn. By Peter, requested by Peter Bray.
Sorry, Peter, about that wrong note. I was thinking about Bobby. Um, she's gone into the... I mean, look at me, sure she's all right. She's just not very well at the minute, this little girl. Are we? You're all right there, aren't you? Okay, fine. And you're both... you're both in there. Oh, okay. They're both in the living room, which is attached to the current BIS dining room. Or is it the BIS li music room? I don't know. It's <laughs> she had jack of all trades, this room, at the minute. Uh, anyway, so thank you very much, Peter, for sending that one in. So I think, Peter, when you watch when you watch us back, you'll see that people watching live enjoyed it, and some people knew it as well. Um, who, uh, so Tim Carrington said, A beautiful tune with gorgeous harmonies. I've not heard this for yonks, he says. Um, who else knew it? I think someone else said it as well. Andrew, uh, Stephen Mill says, Another beautiful, beautifully constructed melody with great harmonies. And Andrew Luce says, Lloyd, a beautiful tune. There we go. So I think we had um, quite a few people who did know it. Mike Dixon is in Hove in Sussex. A heart, keyboard, thumbs up. Daniel Kubaki says, I did not know it, but I like it. I liked it as well. I didn't, I didn't know it, but I liked it. Now the next one, oh yes, you will know. It's coming from James. James, James Mossop. It's a fantastic hymn, this. It's a fantastic hymn. And I've got the desk cant as well on here. Yeah, there it is. So I can just, can I scroll on this or not? Oh, I wish I can't scroll. Why can't I scroll in between them? How do I? I'm going to have to work my way into the next. Oh, I'll have to see. I'll, I'm sure I can. Huh? Huh? Annoying. Anyway, so James has requested, How shall I sing that majesty? The tune, but called Kofen, of course. And he says, it's a perfect marriage of words and music. I agree, James. This is a fantastic, isn't it? What should we do with it? What should we do with it? All right, well, let's hold our horses to begin with. And so we do it the um, Francis Jackson tempo. Okay. Okay, here we go for James uh, Mossop, who says, a perfect marriage of words and music. And this is the end of the pre-requested section of Virtual Church before we'll go into, before we go into our top five, which comes in from Jim Kine tonight. Jim Kime, who's been around for a while. He sent a very nice list of hymns, and we'll get into that after we've had this rousing him and then we'll get after the top five we then go into the live requests so if you want to have your um your live request please do leave me a super chat as i've as some of you have already done but i've got space for more so how shall i sing that majesty which angels do admire
So that is actually um, a Kenneth Naylor descant by himself. He wrote it. And I love the end. I absolutely love the end of it, where it, you go, um, when you have the wonderful bit in the organ, which does this. Uh, da -da. Descant um, goes. Oh, up there, and then down to the. And then. It's a great sequence. It's a good moment, and I. I I actually, when I was um, corresponding with the guys from the revised English hymnal, I was very cheeky. I did say, please, please, please include this descant in in the in, in a, a forthcoming reprint because if any hymn um, is worthy of a descant, it's this. It's this. I can't think of anything else more worthy of a romping descant than this because it's in unison, isn't it? And to have every verse. You know, one, two, three, four, sung in unison, just, you know, sung loudly in unison. It's just oh, oh, quite tiring. Um, but then you have verse four with this stonking desk hand with the sopranos um, singing all the way up right above you. It's just fantastic. That actually brings us to the close of the pre-requested hymns. So, Thank you very much. James is, is in. Thank you very much, James, for your, for your 20 just now. And of course, thank you very much for your request as well. So that, um, I thought that was a pretty good way to end the pre-requested hymn. So let's now move into uh, the hymn section for top five. So five more hymns coming your way, aren't you lucky? And they've all been sent in by Jim. Jim Kime. This is Jim's top five list. And it's a really nice list as well. So Jim sent this uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Um, sent it in middle of January. And I'm getting around to it now. So the first hymn, let me find it and then I'll uh, introduce it. I always do two things at once. Okay, so he says, Jim, the selection, this selection is some of my favourite hymns about our Lord Jesus Christ. I would describe my Christian life as a relationship with God through a faith committed to Jesus, empowered by the Holy Spirit. A great many hymns came to mind, so I have, um, I've had to make my choice by selecting a representative um, from five categories. That's an interesting idea. So let's have a look then. What does Jim start with? So we start at number five and then we'll go down to number one. This is my favourite part of virtual church because it just gives us a chance to get to know someone a bit better. So number five is a hymn that we've not had on BIS before and I know we haven't had it because we haven't, we haven't got it here at at BIS HQ. It wasn't on the iPad. Um, we didn't have it anywhere else. I didn't have it on the computer and I've had to find it. And it is, Thou art the everlasting word, the Father's only Son. And the, 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 the name of this is it's a rather funny name. I can't quite work out how, how to pronounce it. I think it's, it's just Palmer. P-A-L-M-Y-R-A. P-A-L-M-Y-R-A. And Jim says this about this hymn. This hymn beautifully identifies who Jesus is in relation to the Father. It alludes to several of the great um, Christological passages of the New Testament, particularly from the writings of St. John and St. Paul. For me, it creates a sense of awe as I sing. Stephen Mills has just written in the chat, so that's how it, that's how it's spelt. But I can't quite can't 
quite work out where they how the pronunciation of that of that works. It's like Myra, Palmyra, Pal Palmyra, Pal Palmyra. It doesn't seem to doesn't seem right that does it? Um, but it looks like a beautiful tune, and I and I I think you'd like it. Have a listen to this. See what you think to this. This is a gorgeous tune. No more beeps. We're back in hospital again.
There we go. So that was, and I can now say it with some certainty, Palmyra. Palmyra. Um, that was the name of the tune and the words were, Thou art the everlasting word, the Father's only son. And it was number number five in Jim's list. Number four in Jim's list is Hail, thou once despised Redeemer. And he says about it. This ascension hymn reminds us of Jesus, our King, who died for our sins, rose to new life, and ascended to the throne of God. There he intercedes for us until the day of his coming again, when we will be raised and dwell with him. It's a great gospel acclamation, he says. And it is, Hail, thou once despised Redeemer. And it might not be to the tune that you were thinking. I know these words are quite familiar and are often sung to a different tune. And I know that because when I was doing my research and uh, looking for it online, I couldn't find these words married up to Hifridol, which is what Jim wanted me to play it to. So it is going to be sung to Hifridol. You all know this one. The question to you now, which tune do you associate these words with? With which tune do you associate these words?
magic when things just happen when you want them to happen but you don't even need to ask for them to happen <laughs> it'd be nice for a change i beg your pardon <laughs> well a few weeks ago you called me an imposter in my own home don't get used to it <laughs> don't have that poster. you did you said <laughs> what did you say you said there was some some visitor yeah you did i didn't i did i didn't Mm-hmm. Probably all right. Mm. She's on the back of the sofa and now looks on the other sofa. Well, I know. Uh, yeah, Bobby was in here a minute ago and she was looking a bit dodgy. More yeah, so than she's normal. Not, she's not very well. Right, so that, that actually wasn't a raw thorn reharm. It was, um, that was actually a bit of me. And, well, I, I think inspired by a good Noel. Uh, but no, that was, that was actually me, really. I'm told, um, yeah, by the producer, Yes, our James, esteemed producer, yeah. well, one of our esteemed producers who will remain nameless. Was it, was it Josh? It was a guest initially, and then it became an intruder. It wasn't an imposter, it was a guest. Oh. And then an intruder. Ah, uh, guest. Absolutely shocking behaviour. Was it shocking? It is shocking. Anyway, what is shocking? You know, is... I could just click, go offline, you know, and then the whole thing. <laughs> yes, but if you click go offline... No, we're not going to earn money for the music room. <laughs> True. Are we? So it's up to you. <laughs> or I could just troll you by pulling out random stops at random times. That would be quite funny, wouldn't it? No, it would not be funny. <laughs> Even though I may or may not have done that to you already. <laughs> From the other room. Anyway, so let's go into number three of, um, of Jim's list. This is one of my favourites now. I think this is a lot of people's favourite hymn. Where is it gone? Where has it gone? Where is it gone? There it is. Now what I will do is I will get a bit of um, our DNO also for this one because this I know, I know this uh, reharmonisation for the last verse, but this one is an absolute belter. I think this is one of the best ones in the book. So it would definitely be rude not to play it. It's uh, the church is one foundation. Is Jesus Christ her Lord. One of my favourite hymns ever. I know, I was just saying, it's one of mine as well. I think a lot of people's. My top, my top, was it tw 10? 10 that I did from Arundel yeah, Cathedral. We did, we did this was my ten, number one. Ten, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't actually in any particular order, but this was the one that we happened to play as number one. Yeah, it's a great hymn. And so I'll do the rehab. Just before I um, say why Jim has requested this one, um, I think we've got a good. I've got a, a suggested a good poll, a bit of fun, just to keep you entertained. Just to keep you entertained. This is this is a sort of a this will this will show us. Let's have a look. This will show us. This will this will this is this is going to, this is going to be our marmite on this one. I think we should do a poll. Which stop shall I troll you with first? Tuma Arabilis? No. Leave Contra my Bombard thirty two. Leave my tuba alone. <laughs> There you go. Ooh, there we go. Political. Divisive. <laughs> so, anyway, number three in Jim's list. The church is the community that God has gathered of those who make the confession that Jesus Christ is Lord. It is Jesus' church, brought by his death, rejoicing in its worship of God through him, and participating in his mission as it waits for his return. So it is the great tune, great words, the church's one foundation is Jesus Christ her Lord, words of our Samuel Stone, and the tune Aurelia is by Samuel Wesley. And I will take no credit for the final verse. I will hand all of that credit over to our dear reharmonizer extraordinaire you know who Noel Rawsthorne so let's start with the foundation let's start with the eight foots and build on that including the um the quiet swell at eight foot reeds as well really add fire and color to that sound
Well, there we go. So the church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. Number three in Jim's list. We haven't had that hymn for actually for quite a long time. It's a really terrific hymn and not had it for a long time. Anyway, so that was number three. Take us <gasps> into number 50, two. 50 cats and dogs. I know, it's close, isn't it? 50-50. My word. Nala and Bobby have it's got their ears towards, pricked. It's edging towards dogs, isn't it? So I wonder who's going to pit that. I'll leave that open for a little bit longer. Okay, so let's go into number two now in Jim's list. Number two is um, is not a big, rowdy hymn. This is a beautiful hymn. This is more of a beautiful hymn. It is um, Fairest Lord Jesus. Uh, the tune is called the Crusaders Hymn. This hymn of worship to Jesus Christ is one of the first hymns I learned as a young Christian away from my home church in a Christian unity at the University of Sydney in New South Wales, Australia. Now, 60 years later, it remains one of my favourites. It was in the same key, at least, but it's more beautiful, I think. This is, you know what I mean when I say something is more beautiful and lyrical rather than rowdy. So 109 votes, 100, someone's just unvoted. How can, oh, is someone's changing their mind? Someone's just clicking. Okay, fair enough, click away. 109 votes, 52, 48%. <laughs> Let's um, leave it open, then we'll close it after this hymn to see who wins, the cats or the dogs.
beautiful um, hymn, indeed. Um, it's um, a it's called the Crusaders Hymn. Um, and it's fairest Lord Jesus, ruler of all nations. And that was number two in Jim's list. I've closed the poll, had 121 votes, and the cats won. <laughs> That's why you closed it when you did. <laughs> it's rather odd because it's 50% cat, 49% dogs. Who's that 1%? Where did that go? It's obviously how it, obviously how YouTube rounds it up, but it's for whatever the, the facts are there. Cats are more popular than dogs. Finally, we have scientific, factual democracy proof. Anyway, let's go into number one. Number one in Jim's list is a um, the hymn that you would, I think, uh, sing around the season of Lent. Bobby and Nala look thrilled know. with the news. They're absolutely jumping for joy in there. Yes, they are. They're having a riot on that sofa with their eyes closed, asleep. <laughs> Jeez, you, the very thought of thee. And Nala just, just gave me a look. She, she gave me a knowing look. She knows she's superior. <laughs> Where is the tune? There it is. So Jesus, the very thought of thee, with sweetness fills my breast, but sweeter far thy face to see, and in thy presence rest. In this country, we'll sing this tune normally. But here, Jim has asked for a different tune, St. Um, Saint, Saint, um, Saint Agnes which uh, is by John Dykes. I know the tune, but it's not one that we know particularly well in this country. So, for example, if I was playing it in a, in a church service, um, I would probably play the entire tune over as a playover, just in case there's a few people who don't know it. So, Jim says, like all of us, um, um, Bernard of uh, Clairvaux, I'll pronounce that, but it's so C L A I R V A U X. I assume it's French. Um, Clairvaux was a person with ideas of what it meant to be a Christian that many would judge as greatly mistaken. He strongly supported the Crusades, but at the core of his heart was a profound and a very personal love of Jesus. This great devotion is beautifully expressed in this hymn, and I find it one with which I can identify with great feeling. Okay, so this is number one, a beautiful, beautiful hymn with beautiful words and a beautiful tune. And this is what it sounds like.
and that actually brings a close now to Jim's top five. So thank you very much, Jim, for sending in your top five. I'll just give a recap. At number five, we had Thou Art the Everlasting Word, the Father's Son. Going into number four, we then had Hail, Thou Once Despised Redeemer. Was despised, of course. It should be just be despised, but it's despised if you're handle. Uh, number three, the church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord, to the wonderful tune Aurelia, with a little bit of Noel Rawsthorn thrown in for good measure. Number two, not quite making it to number one this week, was Fairest Lord Jesus, wonderful key of E flat. Number one was Jesus, or Jesus, you. The very thought of thee with sweetness fills my breast. Words um, are, are, are Latin, 12th century words, but translated by Edward Caswell. And the tune we used for that one was St. Agnes by John Dykes. And that draws a close to Jim Kimes' top five. So Jim, I know you normally watch back. I don't know whether you're in live with us tonight, but thank you very much for your list and thank you very much for taking the time to put it together. Okay, now let's go into the live requests now. I think we've had a, had a few already. So, yes, uh, I've been- First one comes in from Paul Anthony. He very kindly sent 50 pounds and he said, I'd love to hear Hills of the North Rejoice to the tune Little Cornard, played a good rousing hymn and has special memories for me. Well, that's good enough reason to request it, isn't it? I think there might be some naughty notes in here. Well, they're very good and rousing, aren't they? Naughty notes. Naughty notes. Let's look, let's see if we can find some naughty notes and um, enjoy a little cornard. Hills of the North rejoice, river and mountain spring. Hark to the advent voice, valley and lowland sing.
verse five starts with the word doubt shout <laughs> we'll give you a bit of a clue as to why yeah that's why verse five always starts with a bit of a shout it's word painting it's wakes the congregation up <laughs> shout as you journey on right next one comes in from our friend dct online in australia yeah. um holy god we praise your name to the tune grosser got grosser grosser <laughs> got isn't there a um, uh, shouldn't there be something over the over the o two dots over the o no that would make it grosser but it doesn't i don't know i don't think it does have that over the o oh yeah, I thought it. Or did. does it? You look in the hymn book. No, but it doesn't here. I'm looking at WhatsApp. <laughs> yeah, but WhatsApp. Is WhatsApp is isn't I exactly me. Isn't it Grusa? I don't know. I don't know. Well, we'll, we'll find out by our very learned um, chat in a minute. I'm sure. Holy God, we praise your name, Lord of all. We bow before you. Four verses of this doesn't give us much time to do what I want to do with it.
in that, but I've never been given the opportunity to play it live. It is in there, but I don't think I like that version. Oh. I don't know, I can't remember. I said the, uh, I said the European Sacred Music book. Oh. Okay. Yes, um, All right. Have a look in there, but I don't... There's a, there's a, they've changed some of the harmonies in that version. Oh, shocking. I don't know what... Um... Yeah. Might be all right. I'll play Come Run, sir, and I'll go and find the ESM. I think it'll be all right, actually, this one. I'm just thinking, um, Thou Knowest Lord, beautiful little motets by um, Henry Purcell. There are a couple of versions of it, and... Um, I think this version, this is the correct version. I don't think it is actually. No, it's wrong. But the um, tenor part's wrong towards the end. Anyway, we'll find the right version. Anyway, so the next hymn that we're going to... That, isn't that a great... By the way, sorry, I was distracted by Purcell. It's beautiful, that beautiful motet. Distracted by that. That, um, Holy God, we praise your name. Isn't that a staggering uh, hymn? And we have we have had um, a confirmation that it's there's no no umlaut over the O. It's not in here. He's sent me on a wild goose no, chase. No, it's no, it's somewhere. Absolutely not. Oh, yeah, we have to do we have to cope with this one. I'm yeah, afraid. I'll, I'll, I'll or find, or I'll, I'll find it. it's throw it's, the dice on IMSLP. Well, <laughs> I think it is on. There's, there's there is actually a, quite a good version on there because I use it. I've used it for my choir before. Um, are I we going to play it next, or are we going to play the Welsh hymn next? Uh, uh, the Welsh hymn. The Welsh hymn. Oh, I said it with a German accent. Um, <laughs> oh dear. Thou knowest, Lord, secrets of our hearts. Um, Let me have a look. You play the Welsh hymn, and I'll have a look for it. No, but you don't know which version I want. I think I recognise it because I've sung it a few times for you. No, you don't. You don't know which version I want. Quite specific about it. Oh God, not that one. That's what you think. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah, so that, I think it is this version here. <laughs> so maybe if you just find me. Uh, Talk amongst yourselves, everyone. Yeah. Talk amongst uh, yourselves. I'd, I'd, well, I think that one might be fine. What anyway, one in the book or this one? Before we get to that, let's just have let's have this one. Guide me. Thomas Moronti, you've opened a can of worms here. Big can. Who, who's, who's requested this one? This is. Is, this is it for Eileen? I think I might be wrong. I don't know. You've given You'll me to, to play. Look, you have to look up through. You can't just say you don't Can know you? who it's for. You put it on my desk. Uh, is it Eileen? No, Come. it's Eleanor. Sorry, Come Eleanor. On, producer. Sorry, Eleanor. Sorry. I'm not a producer. No, I'm just a guest in my own home. You're working on or behalf an intruder. of the producer. Yeah, well, exactly. If you're, not getting, you're not getting the answers for me. You're an intruder. Uh, thanks very much Elder to Bottleman Bob and Nick Knack, I think, uh, for your memberships tonight. Really, really appreciated. I love it. We're going to need Bottle all the Bob. help we can get this year with our builder building a music room. Does anybody want to come? <laughs> Nala's going to go out and perform on the street. <laughs> oh, I've, got um, a, I've got a loose stop head. Oh dear. Do you need the little the the thingy, Bob? Um, possibly. I mean, it's okay, but it's just a bit loose. Sort it out another time. If you, I mean, if you want to do it, I can show them how it works. Mm. Careful with all the cables over there. I haven't played anything for ages, so I need to play something quick. Well, play it then. Play the Welsh Well, you, well I can put that in there, and you get the um, the, the little grusset. Look at this. All right, here. This is how it works at BIS. So you put a stop head into here. This was onto the there. first time this technology was Ooh. ever put in a home organ, by the way. And then this is like that. groundbreaking. And then it just very gently rotate it. You see that? You very gently rotate it, and it pushes out the tongs on this little device here, on this, these banana connectors. And then you push it back into the solenoid, and it has more friction. You do it very gently, and just do it gradually until until you've got enough friction. So when you pull it, it doesn't come out in your hand. There we go. Done. Ta -da! It's a fantastic idea, that. 
Okay, so let's go into Cumbron the Guide Me Oath, our great redeemer. Eleanor is going to be absolutely furious because we've been, <laughs> we've been waiting ages for this. We've been no, I rattling think it's, it's, on. It's anticipation. <laughs> yeah, but mindless waffle comes to mind rather than dissipation. Oh, it's um, it's scholarly debate on Henry Purcell. Could you go and get me? The, where, where's the REH? Oh, I don't know. Oh, but I do the, know. It's in your office. No, forget it. I've talk, spoken too much. No, but we'll do it next time. We need to be really quick because in the REH, um, this hymn. I don't know why they've, they've done this, but on the um, on the panel on the list of the committee is a great Welshman, um, Hugh Williams, who is organist at Bath Abbey, and I suspect he said, and this is complete. This is complete um, conjecture. Um, he said he wanted it up in A flat because he's a Welshman and he knows how the Welsh sing these hymns. So Cumrontha in here, rather hilariously, is actually in A flat, so not in G, which is every other hymn book in the entire world, it's in G major. See, Eleanor's gonna be glad we took the or time F here. Major. She's gonna be really glad we took the time to make this really special. So we're having it in A flat major. And it, also in the, uh, in the R.E.H., it's printed in Welsh. Do you want the James O'Donnell desk scan? But then well, you'd have to transpose it. Well, exactly, yeah. So go on, do a bit of transposing on I'm the not, fly, no, just for fun. You. No, thank you. No, thank you. Quick, let's go before uh, everyone switches off. <laughs> I didn't make any mistakes in that one. <laughs> yeah, it's the first one tonight. <laughs> <laughs> not really. Not you really should on play the ball everything and not reason. the key that you're expecting, and then it might get you on the ball <laughs> and not make mistakes. <laughs> not really on the on the ball tonight. That's the thing. Right, where's my iPad? Let's have a look. At so this, this is oh, come at, This request is coming from Thomas Moronta, who says, "As Simeon said to the Mother of God, you yourself a sword will pierce." And this is an appropriate hymn as we are about to begin our Lenten journey. Mm -hmm. um, I would actually like to uh, also dedicate this 
to someone we know, Richard and I know, mm -hmm. someone called Kate, who used to sing in our church choir, who's not very well at the moment. And this piece, Richard's church choir sang this piece so well, very well indeed. And it always reminds me of them. Mm. And it reminds me of Kate, who's yes. not very well. So, um, yes, I'd like to dedicate this to Kate. I think that's fair enough. Let's dedicate it to Kate. I don't know if anyone's listening from the choir, Christine, or, um, but hopefully you are, and you'll know this piece very well. Yeah. Well, let me find that version. I've closed it now, because I just thought that is the version that we used to use. I'm just quite, quite particular about this version. OK, so it's the, this comes from the burial sentences that Purcell wrote for the death of funeral of Queen Mary, was it, or Queen Anne, one of the two. Um, and it was, it, it was quite a large piece with percussion, and it's very, very funereal, a bit like the, um, the croft that, they, that we had at the um, Queen Elizabeth's funeral. Um, you know, there was just like a, a, a beat of the drum to mark that procession. Um, and this is sort of, it comes in the middle of it somewhere. It's, not, it's accompanied by, um, br by brass, uh, usually, um, but it's often today sung unaccompanied because it works well as a, uh, as a motet. And it's thou knowest, Lord, the secrets of our heart. Shut not thy merciful ears unto our prayer, but spare us, Lord, most holy, O God most mighty, O holy and most merciful Saviour, thou most worthy judge eternal, suffer us not at our last hour for any pains of death to fall from thee. Amen. Okay, so let's have a, I'm not quite sure how to play this without, you know, without the choir. Uh, oh, you're good at that sort but, of thing. Well, we'll see. Yeah, Chris, is, Chris is hit listening is and sewing, one of your sopranos in your choir, who sung this so well. Hey, let's have a go.
So I'm sure a lot of you um, would have known that. People who've sung in any choir, um, and any, any choir related to a church, I'm sure you um, recognise that beautiful, beautiful, perfect little miniature. Sung at funerals, memorial services, and, and around remembrance and Lent, and that, that sort of time. So, yes, for any pains of death, it's a very powerful piece there, isn't it? Anyway, let's move on to this one, which is... Jim Cascanet, Saviour Like a Shepherd, Lead Us, yep. to the tune Bradbury. Cool. Thank you very much, Jim, for your sponsor tonight. And um, Regdor91 says, what are your thoughts on baked beans? I'm not My interested. My thoughts on baked beans I'm very much are. It depends on the brand. I always deleted it. Oh, you've deleted it. <laughs> well, I'm getting a bit tired of baked bean chat. Oh, why? What's the Well, he also chat? asked you if you played rap, and it just wasn't appropriate while you were playing Purcell. Oh, okay. So, so I just, being I'm, I'm just bored of it now. So <laughs> Fair enough. Spanner gets thrown on that one, I'm afraid. The user has spoken. The redactor. <laughs> the redactor yes. behind me here has um, spoken. Censored. Yes, no, I didn't see anything to do with that. I just looked up and saw some baked bean chat. Well, it's just not, it's just not very sensitive, is it? Not really. Well... Well, you've spoken. And no, you, you don't have play rap. Do you play rap, Richard? Well, I play a bit of Gangster's Paradise by Coolio. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should uncensor him then. <laughs> Anyway, let's go on to um, Saviour, like a shepherd leaders, much we need your tender care. In your pleasant pastures feed us, for, uh, for our use, your fold prepare.
Thank you very much, Eleanor. Uh, Eleanor, for the questionnaire. Oh, I've lost, I've forgotten who it was now. I've, my um, redactor in chief has, has run off. Whoever it was who requested that one, Jim, I think it was Jim, that's just come to me. Jim, thank you very much for requesting that. I don't think you gave a reason, but it's a gorgeous tune. Okay, so let's go into, oh, ooh, into, that isn't the name of the tune. <laughs> it's, uh, okay, so the hymn tune, what, what is the, what is um, the word? I'm not sure what the words are. I don't know what the words are for this one. Uh, okay, but I'm going to play that one in a way. Abbott's Lee. Um, just seen a quick um thing from john keith in the chat what is the link to richard's from the abbey Hauptwerk evaluation sample set so i think if you go to our website which is beautyandsound.co.uk you can download the sample set from there on the shop you can yeah a free demo yes yeah, a free demo or you can download the whole thing including tuba i would be very happy if you bought the whole thing i really would it makes me really happy when people buy it because it's 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 my little baby um, and it's good I love, as well. I love it when people, people play it. I love it when people play it, like oh, around the world. It's a good historic organ. Let's put Romsey on the map, the world map of so, organs. So we've had a, um, a request from, um, I, I can't, I, I don't even want to offend this person um, by pronouncing their name wrong. Is it a male or female? Where are you up to? The request here, that I'm, I'm trying to play. I need some guidance, come on. <laughs> here, what's going on? This one. Oh, I don't know, come Lisa Springer. Right, Mr. Mr. or Mrs. Springer uh, has requested Abbott's Lee, but I don't know what the words are, unfortunately. Uh, so, I, 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 yeah, I'll just, I'll just play. Sing we of the Blessed Mother. Exactly, that is, that is, those are the words that we normally sing, aren't they? But. Perhaps you want different different words. I don't know, but I'll play I'll play the the the, the tune three times. Sorry, that was so unorganised. I I didn't know quite what the, what the words were there. But sing we of the blessed mother. Sorry, sing we of the blessed mother who received the angel's word and obedience to his summons bore in love the infant Lord to the tune Abbot's Lay by Cyril Taylor. Wonderful, wonderful tune. This. This is what it sounds like if you need to be reminded, which I don't think you do.
like the bells have started ringing again. <laughs> Those bell ringers, they can't resist a good ring, can they? <laughs> so this next one, um, oh love that wilt not let me go to the tune St Margaret. Again, yeah. very kindly sponsored by Bill on behalf of, again, apologies if I pronounce this wrong, Lodewick Nell. Fantastic. So it's, oh love that wilt not let me go. I rest my weary soul in thee. I give thee back the life I owe, that in thine ocean depths its flow may richer, fuller be. The tune is called uh, Saint Margaret. And let's have a go before these bell ringers get a little bit too rowdy. Hopefully they'll stop ringing. Uh, we'll, we'll fire up a WhatsApp to the bell ringers, ask them to stop. <laughs> Thank you very much, Anne, for your 999. That's very generous of you. Really appreciate that. Doc Bauer says, um, thank you, Richard. A virtual offering for virtual church. That's very kind. Thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. All of your donations are really, really appreciated and are very, very helpful. Um, for the next project, the next phase of Beauty and Sound, which is, of course, the music room, which um, you're all invited to. <laughs> We've just got to get it built first. Soon, very soon. I saw that and I just thought I'll add some more suspensions to an already suspension heavy tune. <laughs> so there were one or two more actually <laughs> than you might have uh, uh, got as, uh, as, as usual. Next one is for Daniel Kibaki, our friend. Well, the top one here. Yeah, uh, yes, save you more than life. It's um, another Fanny Crosby one, I think. Yes, it is. It words music by William William uh, Dunn. Dean, is it Dean? D -O -A oh, Dunn, Dunn, is it Dunn? Not sure. D O A N E. Um, Saviour, more than life to me, I am clinging, clinging close to thee. Let thy precious blood apply. Keep me ever, ever near thy side. 
We're going to have an organ voluntary soon, I think. A few more to play first. Yes, I'm just thinking what to play for Evolve. I think a big bark, I think. A big bark? Maybe one that starts with a pedal scale. Not too risky. Oh, that one. I don't want to fancy it. I don't know. I could always troll you with a tube of Mirabilis if it all gets too much. Follow me with a tube of Mirabilis. Yes, you know, cover up your mistakes. What mistakes? <laughs> oh, the cheek. So again, the next one, Bill has very kindly sponsored for Brady Kilman, How Firm a Foundation, O Saints of the Lord, to the tune Foundation. This is quite a popular one now. We, we hear it a lot, don't we, these days? That's why I didn't know at all, but in the last few months it seems to have... Yeah, been, we know um, what I hear, don't we? Request it. A few times, yeah. Thank you very much, Bill, for your generosity tonight and your, and your helping other people by sponsoring their hymns. That's very kind of you. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, so how firm a foundation, O saints of the Lord, to the tune foundation. And this is apparently early American. I think it's going to be quite, I can imagine it's been fairly slow. Please can I have your iPad? Yes. Thank you for the next one. Thanks.
Lord, have firm a foundation, O saints of the Lord. Sorry, by the way, that I'm not really able to comment on the background or the heritage of some of these uh, hymns and tunes. I don't always know like their, their, their background, because these hymns are, some of these hymns, particularly the ones in this hymn book, the ELW, and some of the other ones, like the, 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 um, the hymnary 1982. So a lot of these hymns are new to me. I don't, I don't quite know where they come from, who composed them, what their historical context is. So I do apologise for not being able to sort of talk about that. Um, over time, I'll get used to it and um, I'll learn more about it. Uh, but for now, I'm just I'm learning with you, I'm learning what they're all about. So this next one is from a request from G Fraser, who is in Canada. G Fraser, yes, hello, G Fraser. It is a, um, it is Psalm 121. Oh, I, I um, lift up my eyes into the hills. Exactly, yeah. a, a paraphrase of. Well, it's probably not. It's probably just a different setting of. But it is Psalm 121. Um, that's all I know. Great. Well, the tune is called Sandon. Yeah. I know that too. Yeah, and it oh, it's by Charles Purday. Don't you know? Uh, thank you very much to Ian Garden, who's just um, sent through fifty pounds. Thank you very much, Ian. That's oh, thank you uh, very, very much, kind. Ian. Ian's got a, a medal for his um, his what do you call it? His channel membership thing. No. So, what was the one before that? Was it a? Um, is it number five? He hasn't Bill? sent me on a wild goose chase this week, oh, looking God. up him tune names that are also golf wear golf brands. Golfers. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's oh well. I, did, I, I had no idea. Anyway, so... <laughs> Neither did I. <laughs> those, people who, who, those people who don't know what we're talking about have no idea what we're talking about. And I'm sorry, but I can't be bothered to explain. <laughs> that isn't, that's not worth it. Uh, and so, uh, so, anyway, more serious matters here. This Good is Psalm, night, Garrett. This Good is night. Psalm 100 and... Uh, sleep well. This is Psalm 121, Unto the hills, around do I lift up my longing eyes combination of words isn't it onto the hills around do I lift up mine eyes okay and it's called Sandon hmm, this is a, an interesting tune so let's um, bring out the cornet down here and uh, accompanied by some flutes
So, unto the hills around do I lift up my longing eyes. I paraphrase, as we've said before, on Psalm 121, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh, cometh my, my help. help. My help cometh even from the Lord. Oh, you know the rest of it. Who oh, hath Lord. made heaven and earth. What are you he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. And he that keepeth thee will not What are you sleep. singing in your head at the minute? Do, do, do. <laughs> so, that was for G Fraser in Canada. Thank you very much. Um, Sean, next request, Sean. Sean, who I think is down in West Sussex. Yes, right? near Chichester. Yeah. What, what a, a friend, friend we, we have, have in Jesus. <laughs> that was funny, wasn't it? Predictable. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. And then, what is uh, one more after this? Yes. Good. And then we have a voluntary. So we need to, I need to know what to play for a voluntary. Yeah, the last hymn came in from Tim so, Carrington. It's for, in honour of the dogs and cats, all things bright and beautiful. All things B and B. So we've had you a. You can choose the tune. He's I, very. I'm going to say something else. Wow. Thank you. We, we need to have a voluntary. Um, well, yes. So what are we going to? There were lots of BWVs. We, bark. We woof. Call it a night. But the cats won, so. <laughs> the cats. Won. The cats won, so I'm not sure how appropriate bark is. Oh, I see what you're saying. That's what they were saying. Bark for a dog, but and you know. And what for a cat? I don't know. There's that cat sweep, but you've never played it. You have got a copy of the music, but let's have a go at this before we get carried away in cat. Catch at. <laughs> So we've had um, a request for all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. There's a great debate about which tune is the more popular one. Well, you are in charge tonight. Tim has, has given you the decision on which tune to play. Is it, which Tim is it? Carrington, I think. Tim Carrington. How are you feeling, Tim, tonight? Are you feeling any better? Have you had a good day today? Good week? 
and down, I think, isn't it? For our four-legged friends, he says. Richard, either of the two popular tunes, you choose, please. Heart. Well, okay. Let's see. I'll go with the one, the Roy, uh, Royal Oak one, uh, for today, because this is quite a... Quite a I, think I, I, I think I personally prefer this one. I think I do. I think I do. I'm not sure. Can't confirm. <laughs> I won't confirm or deny. Exactly. I don't Nala, which do you prefer? And she's just winked at me, this one. Oh, shit. Okay, let's have a go at this one then. What key are we in? A flat, okay. to get those four legged little fairy friends up and about all things bright and beautiful to the tune there royal oak i think the final hymn is this the final one i wish it's disappeared i think the final hymn tonight josh is this the final one um is i think rather appropriately the day thou gavest, Lord, is ended. The darkness falls at thy behest. To thee our morning hymns ascended. Thy praise shall sanctify our rest. Wonderful, wonderful tune, of course, uh, called uh, St. Clement. Um, and we, we will have um, a little bit of a descant in the final verse, which is by Christopher Robinson, the great um, uh, choir trainer, Christopher Robinson, who was for a long time director of music at St. John's College, Cambridge, and trained a lot of very, very fine singers. 
including you know people like Yiston Davis, and went through um, lots and lots of organ scholars as well. There are too many, too many organ scholars to mention. Um, and before that, he was the organist at St George's Chapel, Windsor. And I think before that, he was number two, I think, at Worcester Cathedral, or was it? I don't know. Was he number one at Worcester? Somewhere before Windsor, I can't quite remember where he was, but very fine. His recordings are absolutely top notch. If you want to go and check him out. Okay, so the, the day thou gave us the Lord is ended, and uh, Josh will remind me uh, who who has um, sponsored this one. Okay, let's have a go.
Uh, Philip, are you still with us? Yeah, he is. He came in quite recently, so I'm sure he's still with us. We might have to... Might have to hold fire on um, your request for next week. Is that all right? We just need to find a copy of it. Got one here, but... I don't know whether it's the right one. We'll have to, should we find that one for next week? Put it in the backlog. Josh, could you add that one to the um, the next week, please, and make sure we play that one for for Philip because he did it was very very kind and sponsored it. Oh, he sent it by email. I don't think we have we received that. Let me have a look. Let me have a look. Aha, there is one here actually. Okay. Let's have a look then. Yes, there it is. So this will be our final hymn tonight because it's getting on. <laughs> it's been going for three hours. Longer than normal. Okay. Um, Philip, so could you... Um, no, we'll have it tonight, Philip. Don't worry. Um, I, 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 I just don't know how to say these words. Um, so could you help us out by giving us the, the words? and then possibly the translation as well. Uh, and whilst you're doing that, there we go, it's called The Angel of Light Goes With Shine. And um, is this a, is this a hymn from, you know, you can also tell us about the, the, the tune and the, the hymn as well. Where is it from? Is it from Denmark? Where is it? What is it? Okay, so, um, the, there are no bar lines. Oh, there are actually, little, there are little small bar lines. Interesting. So let's have. A, what should we have? Let's have. Um... A translation is the angel of light goes with shine. A rough translation. It's from Denmark and it speaks of God as light. Nice. Okay. Well, this will be our final hymn tonight, and I hope you enjoy it.
That concludes the hymns. That's it. Brilliant. That is um, a a bit of a relief because that was a bit of a hymn marathon tonight, wasn't it? (laughs) (laughs) So, Philip, thank you very much for sending that one through. I didn't know that one at all. Um, Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. It was new to Bob in Canada. Yeah. So what are we going to have for a very quick voluntary then? What should we have for a quick vol? Well, I, so I, the requests, uh, suggestions... Um, I don't think you'll be playing the wedge now. Sorry, Daniel. I know how to fill the, the wedges. Yeah, well, I just, I just know you won't want to play the wedge now. I think you're that. a bit tired. If I'd played it, maybe, maybe I've had one or two fewer... Oh, he's now suggesting the E minor trio sonata, Richard. <laughs> Daniel, you have great faith in, in St Anne. That's quite long, we've had, Tim. We've had the St Anne loads of times. I think the St Anne's a bit long. People I think Paul Richard's it. quite flagging, actually. People are bored of it, aren't they? <laughs> right, come on, let's, 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 have a, let's do a quick flashy, a quick flashy toccata. Um, let's get, get that. Let's get this on. Let's. So this is um, Bach, um, one that you don't hear all that often, which is a bit of a shame. I think it is good. Um, and it's the Toccata uh, in C major, BWB 564. It's pretty cool, this piece, though. It is pretty cool. You'll, uh, you'll like this one. Um, yeah, so let's have a go. Very inauth- uh, an inauthentic registration, but Dudelange does a lot of things very well, but I wouldn't say it was an authentic Bach organ. All right, so you just have to be a bit more romantic with it. So here we go, all the couplers, <laughs> all the couplers, all the flutes and diapasons and some mutations as well thrown in. And and this is the Toccata in C major by, by you know who, James Bach.
Well, there we go. That was the Takata from the Takata Ardagio and Fugue in C BWV 564. A terrific um, set of pieces. It, all, all three of those movements are fabulous. You'll recognize the, um, the, last, the middle movement, um, which goes like this. I haven't played it for a while. The fugue at the end is terrific. Really, really a lot of fun, all of those, um, or all, all of those. Oh, the end of the... Um, the slow movement was used in succession. It was. For the funeral. It was. The, um, the, the end of the adagio, the middle movement, is very similar to the um, segue of the... Um, yeah, they. We I mean, have the double, the, the, those really excruciating harmonies, um, but just before the fugue, you have a similar idea here, where you have those very similar harmonies. So it's fair to say, fair to say that these, the two pieces were very similar in um, in period, composed at a similar time, I think. Anyway. So that draws a close. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for your very generous donations. Thank you for your company. Thank you, of course, to Josh Wilson, who's been our producer in chief tonight. Cats, cats victorious. Cats victorious by one point, but we were victorious. <laughs> we were <laughs> victorious. Um, there we go. <laughs> what, a, what fun. Okay, yeah. so until next week, um, what, what are we doing? on BIS next week. It's a live recital on Saturday. Transcriptions. Um, of transcriptions, indeed. Which sample set will you be using? Oh, TBC. Oh. To be confirmed, I think. Maybe this one, maybe Salisbury. Could do, I don't know. I thought you'd use Romsey Abbey. You've got a few to choose from. Uh, so that's Saturday, eight o'clock. Um, be there or be square. Uh, so until Saturday, I will say a cheerio, unless you've got anything else to add. Have no. I forgotten to say anything? Nothing at all to okay. add. Great. Cool. In which case, I'll say good night, everyone. Apart from cats were victorious. Good night, everyone. Take care, and you stay safe. Cheerio. Cheerio. <laughs> what was that? <laughs>